Hello everyone, my name is Ana Villanueva and I'm a PhD student at the Z Design Lab from Purdue University. Um, this work was a collaboration done with Jingjie, Tsi, and Professors Reddick, Bepler, and Romani. So what is MedIR App? It's an augmented reality-based platform that enables easy authoring for instructors and students. The main contribution of MedIR App is its unique architecture, which caters to project-based classrooms. More specifically, we implement a pool-based collaboration model, which allows for real-time authoring and contributions between stakeholders. So before we move on to the specifics of MedIR App, I want to talk about the background of AR authoring tools. For a while now, HCI has been trying to make it easier for developers and designers to create rich AR experiences. Existing platforms such as um, Unity or Unreal, which are comprehensive game engines, come with a visual editor and allow assets such as 3D and 2D models to be imported and, and managed. These are the preferred tools of developers since they require considerable coding and animation skills. However, uh, research in recent years has introduced experimental platforms that enable easy authoring. Some commercial tools, such as Bufori Studio, Blipbar, or Layer, have opted for visual interfaces to make the interaction process easy and intuitive. But these are often limited and work in an isolated space. So what are these missing? Well, in one word, collaboration. A collaborative architecture that mimics classroom dynamics, which involves sharing information, content, and help among peers. So now we will briefly go over collaborative tools that are typically used in classrooms. In this work, we can think of asynchronous editing, such as wikis, or parallel editing, such as Google Docs. These tools allow students to read, edit, and update content structures between users. However, these workflows would not work well for an AR classroom because information would not be time sensitive and multiple people could simultaneously modify one step of the project, which would create um, conflict and cause confusion among students. So what could be a good solution? In open source software, the pool-based model implements collaboration schemes to streamline the integration of contributions to projects. The pool-based model became popular within the open source community with platforms such as GitHub. The typical pool-based model includes moderators who are project creators that receive contributions from other members of the team open pull requests and determine whether to merge content based on technical merit or trust. An adaptation of this model would work well for a classroom setup because it is based on version control, which was specifically designed to resolve conflict among multiple changes and multiple stakeholders. So now that we have gone over the background, I want to talk about our formative study to determine how to cater our platform to the needs of an AR classroom. Because we wanted to observe the dynamics of a real STEM classroom, we shouted a weekly three-hour session of a project-based class in design and prototyping of smart things, in which students build their own robots over a semester period. We actually became very involved with the class material and the instructors. We also made a scrapbook of our observations from the class in order to understand how they navigated the content and communicated with each other. Based on our observation of the class, we concluded with a set of design goals, which we implemented into the system. These goals included the toolbox that we provided to students to create their own content, the collaborative architecture that would enable students to help each other, and a platform that works for a wide range of projects in STEM courses. So let's begin by talking about the instructor mode of Meta Air App. In the main interface, the functionality of the animation palette is similar for a system in the instructor mode, which is the 2D editor, and student mode, which is a 3D editor in the physical world. However, instructor mode provides uh, instructors with more features to moderate the flow and the quality of information. This includes taking or uploading video, voice, patterns, pictures, um, highlighting objects, creating annotations, or animations. Initially, the instructors are in charge of creating the original project in the editor, and then students can make their own contributions as they move along the project. As such, only instructors are given the capability to accept or reject these contributions for the entire class. As for the student mode, it allows students to start on the application as the recipients. Once they have locally downloaded the original content, students can modify it as they move along. In this mode, we only kept essential features, draw, annotation, take video, and take picture. 
This was done mainly because uploading files locally doesn't really make sense during real-time collaboration. Interaction modalities of our platform. In order to alleviate the burden of instructors who serve as the supervisors of the class and would have to handle pull requests and help out students, we introduced an original type of pool-based model, local pool. Local pool combined with global pool, which is based on the traditional model, are the two types of interaction modalities facilitated by our platform. So local pool requests are approved by students in need of help and sent by students who volunteer help. In this case, students can help out others by adding explanations such as images, video, and text to the project and sharing them by pool-based requests to the cloud. In turn, the struggling students can browse the suggestions provided by contributors and choose the most helpful ones to merge, while these changes only take place in their local devices. Global pool requests are approved by the instructor and sent by the students. Once the changes are merged, they will take uh, effect globally, um, meaning that these changes are available to the entire class. Uh, we implement a global pool to help instructors improve the content for a future class. To clarify, local pool is from student to student, while global pool is from student to class, pending um, approval from the instructor. I'm going to talk about the implementation of our system. Um, MetaIR app was developed in Unity. We install our application in tablets, uh, we build a cloud server to enable file sharing and communication among users. We encoded the metadata of AR project files into an XML file, which was uploaded to the server along with other um, AR project files in runtime. The server had another um, XML file to track the interactions um, taking place. So now I want to move on and talk about our control user studies for MetaIR app. We recruited 12 participants and split them into two groups, uh, instructors and students. The instructors were current or former teaching assistants with at least one year of teaching experience in STEM classes. The six students had completed a minimum of one semester of STEM education courses. The instructors were given scripts, uh, exact procedural paper instructions of the applications they were supposed to create which were taken directly from the first lesson of the smart prototyping class we worked on and included um, basic exercises. The students had to complete the exercises following these instructions. We gave each instructor and student a tutorial of about 35 minutes on the features of MetaIR app. The participants learned about the main features of our application, including authoring and collaboration. Then instructors were in charge of creating an application which included two tasks from this class, introducing basic electronics and concepts and creating a bold touch divider. In both cases, all the features and functionality of our system were tested. Similarly, the students received the application created for them by the instructors and had to perform a series of predefined modifications. We presented participants with a five-point Likert scale, one being strongly agree and five being strongly disagree, to rate their experience using MetaIR app. Um, as we can observe, overall usability of the application received very favorable marks and the impressions of the participants were positive as well. Based on the participants' suggestions, we made some small modifications to our system in terms of simplicity and practicality. For example, we took out the requirements of instructor's approval for the local pool since this was a time waste for the instructor and not realistic in terms of um, the pace of the class. We also wanted to test um, our system in open-ended user studies. So to this end, we chose two instructors with experience in STEM project-based classes. We gave both uh, a 30-minute tutorial on the features of the system the instructors uh, had freedom to design the virtual material from their class using a MetaIR app. For this class on IoT development, both chose to teach how to construct a mini smart city made out of cardboard material, conductive ink on plywood for the circuit connections, and electrical circuitry components, uh, for example, LEDs, batteries, microcontrollers. The objective of the class was to teach students about concepts such as polarity, connections in series, and parallel and current flow. The entire project was comprised of about 25 different actions. Students received instructions to 17 of them and were expected to explore and figure out the rest. 
The instructors assign all the material for the class, including the cardboard pieces for the smart city, circuitry logic, and the procedural AR. We recruited 40 undergraduate students, and we split them up into four sessions. No AR, a typical class with the instructors in which the main instructor taught in front of the class, was showing the instructions on assembling the smart city um, by using a projector view of his hands. AR only, a class with AR content creating with MetaAR app made up of the procedural assembly of major components of the smart city. AR local, uh, a class with AR content created by the instructors and contributions such as help, hints, answers, suggestions from student to student, this being the local pool, uh, using our platform. And finally, AR local global, uh, instructors selected contributions from student, this referring to the local pool, to improve the AR content created by them and the option of continuing contributions from student to student, this being local pool. We can observe that uh, introducing AR into the classroom decreases overall error per class uh, during problem solving. Also, there was a large number of contributions for the AR local and the AR uh, local global conditions from students to their peers, uh, which were requested and answered or volunteered. Similarly, number of help requests for the AR conditions mimics the amount of uh, interaction in a non-AR classroom. So our discussion centers around uh, what a classroom which implements MedIR app looks like. We organize our class model into four categories based on our user studies, work, design, collaboration, and technology. Work, uh, manipulating tangibles. AR is actually really helpful to visualize abstract concepts. And in our case, students took advantage of that. And uh, students in the local and global conditions made sure to share anything they felt wasn't shown, like current or polarity. So these became visible rather than just trial and error procedures design, creating uh, learning content. This implementation of the pool-based model gave instructors and students the valuable tool of creating AR content in an AR environment in real time, obviously pending um, approval from a moderator. Uh, but this made the quality of the class much better. And then collaboration uh, between students and the class. Uh, well, obviously, students' first instincts was to ask questions to the instructors, regardless of the collaborative technology being implemented. Once uh, collaboration was implemented for the AR local and the AR local global conditions, we observed that students providing contributions such as help or hints were typically the most advanced in the assignment and they made up of about 30% of the class. This is different from collaboration conditions based solely on proximity in that the software allowed for the best students to actively engage in helping the struggling students um, that were not sitting close to them. This type of collaboration aided the instructors by relieving them of the pressure to help students uh, one at a time and by directly providing help to the struggling students that was accurate and timely. An observation from the class was that the number of contributions was higher for both AR local and AR local global conditions as compared to the number of help requests from students. So this meant that students were actually making voluntary contributions rather than just answering questions. Technology, effective learning and problem solving. Once the local and local global conditions were implemented, the debugging process became a collective experience in which students were contributing with possible ideas on how to solve the circuit. Finally, the AR local global condition was the most student-friendly condition. This was the second iteration of the original AR project created by the instructor, mainly because the AR um, content considerably improved based on contributions made by the students from the AR local session. To finalize, I want to end with these key points. MetaAR app is an authoring platform for collaborative AR. We demonstrated how we can leverage the medium of AR combined with cloud technologies to support selective and timely collaboration, which enables a decrease in error during problem solving. We also observed how iterative improvement of AR learning content in the form of local and global pool can improve the original AR project and spark curiosity and creativity among students' learning process. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know. Thank you.